Hey guys, welcome back to another YouTube video and I'm so excited to be back and collaborating with Sophia Carey, one of the most talented photographers I know. And it was only two years ago when she reached out to collaborate with me on the two photographers shoot the same model video. And you can check that video out in the description. So it's now two years later and we have both progressed so much more. Not just within digital photography, but Sophia now also shoots medium format film. And I've picked up some new video skills, so we thought it would be a great reunion to collaborate on a shoot where we can show everyone our newfound skills compared to what we knew two years ago. Oh, and we also both switched over to Sony. Sorry, Canon. Anyway, we wanted this video to feel a little different than our last one, which felt more like a fun, competitive challenge. This time we both collaborated on two concepts, which were autumnal knitwear and 80s retro vintage fashion. Bringing our ideas together really got both of us thinking about each other's specialism and our tastes, and it's such a great way to just learn ideas from each other, because we both get to get out of our comfort zones. So don't forget to check out Sophia's latest video in the description after you watch this one where she's going to show you her side of the shoot, taking you guys through her process and her mindset of her film photography and a lot more. Our amazing models today were Curtis and Tony. They had such good chemistry on the shoot together and were just perfect for both concepts. So we also made sure to use locations that complemented their styling and concept. On this shoot I really got to see the way Sophia creates these elegant moments with models which feel so raw and authentic, especially when she was using her beasty medium format film camera. The idea of capturing those authentic moments just becomes even more real when you see it on film. And in return Sophia got to see how I conduct models to be a bit more exaggerated and playful as that's my style and my style centers around escapism and how I can make you feel something different in trying to capture these little frozen moments of spectacle. So my video today is going to focus on new video skills that I learned in the past year and the steps I took to create a short fashion film from our shoot today. The real reason I switched over from Canon to Sony was to encourage myself to get more into video and since doing that I've created a lot of video content for fashion brands, fashion bloggers, street dancers and just various other commercial clients. And because of that, my income as a creative has just doubled and I can now offer both photography and videography. Something to think about on your own creative journey. So I pretty much have multiple ways of shooting video. If I'm shooting both photography and videography and the content uses only for personal content like a fashion blogger or a video portfolio update for a model or even just some lightweight content for brands that's around 15 to 30 seconds, then most of the time, I'll be using my small rig setup. So this cage is just amazing for quickly being able to switch from photography to videography, and it gives me the ability to pull off some shots that would be very difficult without it. I mean, I can set my camera with ease up and down using this uh, top grip, and with a rose wooden handle on the side, I can easily pan from side to side in just more stable manners than just going handheld. And at the same time, you can really use both grips to get some nice creative rotational shots. Possibilities are quite endless when you really think about how many different ways you can use this. So I used a small rig for our shoot today to create a short fashion film. And the goal of my film was just something very lightweight and simple, like a lookbook. I'm trying to put a lot of focus on capturing the styling through a lot of wide shots because our concept was birthed by styling in the first place, so I really want to make sure those wide shots showcase the styling. But also I'm really interested in capturing the model's chemistry and their personality, so I'm constantly instructing the models to be in sync together, sometimes engaging with the camera, sometimes being animated in how they pose, sometimes pretending the camera isn't even there and just interacting with their clothing. I'm also looking to capture close-up, intimate shots as both models have amazing features about themselves and how they use their facial expressions to really show some confidence and charisma. But my biggest piece of advice is to also have a lot of dynamic shots and by that I mean I'm constantly moving the camera. If you're just standing still, hitting record in the same position then you may as well just use a tripod. 
But the reason I invested in a small rig was so I can be so much more dynamic with my shots. I'm constantly moving my arms and body to try and emulate tracking shots, panning shots, rotating shots, tilting shots. These kind of shots just really keep the audiences more engaged and help you get more creative in the editing process later. And lastly, I film all my footage in Log HLG3 at 120 frames per second. So that way I have full creative control of the tempo and colour of my fashion film. If I want to try and make something with a lot of fast paced energy, I can. If I want to create something much slower and cinematic, I can. If I want to really make something super vibrant and rich in colour, then I can when I'm colour grading. Big shout out once more to Tony and Curtis that did such an amazing job on this shoot. Please check their profiles out in the description below. And also special shout out to this random guy who just started to straight up vibe on our shoot. So after getting as much footage in both locations and piecing it all together, here is the final product. Hope you guys enjoyed that, I had so much fun filming and creating that video, let me know what your thoughts are about it in the comment section. Now there are some drawbacks to handheld video, like the lack of stabilisation, but for lightweight content online it's quite an easy fix in Premiere Pro using something like Warp Stabilizer, which is not perfect but in most cases gets the job done for shorter, fast cutting videos. But the point is to encourage you to jump into video and build your video portfolio and eventually you'll find your way towards bigger opportunities and bigger clients. And that's when I also didn't just invest into the small rig, but I also invested into my DJI Ronin, which was a gimbal stabilizer. And I usually take this out when I'm doing my bigger jobs, which require a lot more attention to detail. So I hope you took something away from this video. Being a photographer is my first specialism and always will be. But stepping into the field of video has really opened up a lot of opportunities, both creatively and financially for me. And I encourage any photographer to do the same if your camera has video features. I'm now going to leave you with a nice montage of me in my photography element on this shoot, showing some before and afters. And before I go, don't forget to check out Sophia's amazing video on her YouTube channel. And that way you can also see her images from this shoot, from the film camera, and also her digital shots. So links are going to be in the description. Big thanks once again to the amazing talented models Curtis and Tony featuring in our collaboration. Their links are also going to be in the description. And don't forget to hit that like, subscribe and notification bell. And I'll see you guys in the next one.